Hello, welcome back to Med Today we're going to talk about the effects of fasting on the body. So fasting is defined as the abstinence from all or some foods or drink for a set period of time, most and mostly between 24 to 42 hours. And the, um, they've been used in medical um, treatments since the time of Hippocrates. And they um, and fasting is prevalent in many cultures and traditions. For example, in Yom Kippur with uh, with Jews and um, Ramadan for Muslims. And intermittent Intermittent fasting involves cycling between periods of eating and fasting, ranging from a few hours to a few days at a time. It's a relatively new trend in diet culture. Um, some experts argue that because we have evolved from hunter-gatherers, that we, our human bodies are used to fast, uh, used to not eating for a long period of time and then having like bursts of fed states, and that's why um, they promote intermittent fasting like that. So, um, what happens in our body is gluconeogenesis which okay basically the, usually the primary source of energy in the body is glucose from carbohydrates and the liver and muscles store this glucose and release it into the bloodstream when needed however after about eight hours of fasting the liver will use the last of its glucose reserves and it will begin gluconeogenesis to produce its own sugar and the liver converts non-carb materials such as amino acids and fat into glucose so weight loss um, Fasting does appear to help with weight loss, however the data on this is few and re more research is needed. So for example, young men who fasted for 16 hours showed that fat loss, they, they showed fat loss while maintaining muscle mass, which is ideal for people who um, are looking at bodybuilding. And fasting is not necessarily better than any other traditional weight loss methods, such as like low calorie intake. So people who are fasting are more likely to give up on weight loss efforts than those who diet in a more traditional way. And this may, it's because fasting is harder to maintain over time. And um, during fasting, we, uh, we undergo something called metabolic switching, which is when the body exhausts all of its sugar stores and starts to burn fat. And the basal metabolic rate becomes more efficient to conserve resources, which is why uh, fasting boosts metabolism. And post-fasting binging uh, can uh, derail the effects of the initial weight loss benefits of fasting by um, overeating uh, when you're done fasting. Um, and it can also be, fasting can also lead to a false sense of security because you're more likely to disregard healthy eating choices when you're not fasting. So um, weight loss <coughs> isn't guaranteed. So ketosis is also something that happens when you're fasting and it's when the body burns stored fat as its primary power source. And one of the byproducts of turning fat into sugar is ke are ketones, which can be, which are also another source of energy. And uh, you can you can see how that links to the keto diet if you're familiar with it, and that is when you're consuming very low amount of carbs and replacing them with fat um, for energy, which can lead to like you can reduce your risk of certain diseases as well as weight loss from that. But however, um, it could you need to be you need, uh, you need to exercise caution because it can lead to starvation, and that is when the body starts burning muscle for energy. Um, so diabetes, um, does anyone want to give a quick overview of what diabetes is, or like type 2 diabetes? You don't know, like insulin resistance or that, yes? Um, so there are two types, one of them is type 2. Yeah. Okay, so your body still does produce insulin, right, but it doesn't actually respond to the insulin produced, so it can be some kind of receptor in the same bit, like the spots of it something. Um, yeah, and the way it's done, So uh, studies show that intermittent fasting or alternate day fasting can help decrease blood sugar levels, which um, which can help with type 2 diabetes as it reduces insulin resistance and uh, can prevent spikes and crashes. And some studies have found that fasting may impact blood sugar levels differently for males and females. So for instance, a three-week sh study showed that practicing alternate day fasting impaired blood sugar control in females but had no effect in males. Um, so mood, um, so, so some studies report that short-term fasting can increase negative emotions such as anger, irritability, fatigue, anxiety, and lower positive mood and lower perceived work performance, which I think some, most of us experience, who those who are, us who are fasting in the beginning. Um, but other studies have shown that short-term fasting can cause mood enhancement, and like in an 18-hour fasting period among healthy women, they found that fasting can lead to an increased positive effect of 
experience such as a sense of achievement, pride, or water control. However, other studies have found that there is no significant difference between fasting days and non-fasting days, or between fasting subjects and non-fasting subjects. There's very much um, a difference in the findings of many different studies, and this and there can be two reasons for this. One is the way they assess fatigue or mood. Um, so some studies use the um, visual <coughs> analog scale, which says that fasting decre uh, like mood decreases um, in the beginning and then increases. And some other studies have, have used fatigue severity test, which which says that uh, fatigue just decreases throughout fasting. <coughs> so the ways of assessment are different. And uh, secondly, um, this was these studies are more linked to more linked to Ramadan and Yom Kippur. So um, religious beliefs can also affect this. For example, if you have a strong religious belief, you you have a more sense of fulfillment and positive emotion but, uh, when fasting. But compared to subjects who did not have a strong religious belief, and they would view fasting as more of a, a um, a negative experience and other effects of fasting it can improve heart health um, alternate day fasting could reduce cholesterol levels and decrease the risk factors for heart disease such as blood pressure and blood triglycerides inflammation um, so chronic conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and cancer are affected by inflammation and fasting can be linked to reducing levels of C protein which are released uh, as a, when um, interleukins are released um, and cancer, so studies with mice show that fasting during chemotherapy jump starts, the immune system exposes the cancer cells to get rid of old toxic cells, which is the idea of the cancer can be replaced by new healthy ones. So um, usually patients undergoing chemotherapy are told to increase their calorie intake, but however with these findings it could be under abuse. And stem cells, so researchers at, the researchers at MIT showed that stem cells drastically increase their rate of regeneration and the subject was in a faster state of 24 hours in both young and age subjects. Um, however, there's only a couple of studies on this and it's not very um, uh, credible. Okay, so with every study there are limitations. And with these studies, most fasting related studies were based on animals such as mice, which such as on mice, and not humans, so the results may not be entirely applicable. Most studies also had small sample sizes and the results were not statistically significant such as people with obesity who fasted intermittently for 12 months lost, significant, lost slightly more weight than those who dieted in a more traditional way, but the results were not statistically significant. Um, thirdly, lots of studies were old and outdated and, or reached to none or conflicting conclusions, such as the mood one. And many failed to take lifestyle into account on whether fasting is viable for an ordinary person's life. And the specific, specificity of different fasting types are also not considered. So for example, alternate day fasting, intermittent fasting, or Ramadan fasting, the distinctions are not usually clear. Um, yeah, we're done.